What's up guys, Brad here from Piney Grove, and I think we're gonna show you something today in this video you've probably never seen before. We're gonna till our garden with our mini excavator, but what we have is a real compacted clay type of soil here. When we cleared this land, there was actually some burn piles out here, and the uh, guy who cleared the land dug some holes and brought a lot of clay to the surface, and part of where we have this garden is where he put some of that clay. So we're finding as we put down these tomato bins here, these, these buckets to protect the tomatoes, we can't dig in the soil. A lot of this soil just really needs to be loosened up. We're gonna bring in some topsoil that we dug up for our driveway build and put in here and then till it all in so this is a garden that will actually work versus a garden that's like concrete. The only type of deep tillage that we have, and it's not really deep tillage, is a rototiller for the tractor. And I just got to thinking that if I rototill this, it's only gonna go down a few inches, you know, four or five inches but it's just not gonna loosen up the soil like it really needs to be. So I figure I'll come in here with this, loosen everything up, get it down, I don't know, six, eight inches, get everything loose. This is all pasture grass, Bahia grass, so there's a lot of roots and stuff here. But just get all this ripped up and I'll smooth it out a little bit. I'll dump some dirt from the driveway. It's, it's dark dirt, so it's got a little bit of organics to it but we'll dump that in here and then we'll mix that all up with the rototiller. We say it a lot on our channel here how handy this excavator is, but we never in a million years would have thought you could use an excavator for something like this, but it's a good use of it. It can, it can dig as deep as I want or as shallow as I want. It does it effortlessly and it does it properly. It doesn't miss anything. It's not gonna put a lot of uh, you know heavy duty wear and tear on our Kubota tractor. We have a 39 horsepower Kubota tractor and we have a deep, like a single chisel plow that we could have used. But I just felt like that would take a long time. At first pass, that might go a little deeper, but it put a lot of strain on the tractor, a lot of strain on the three-point hitch. When we were digging this with a shovel, it was almost impossible to dig with a shovel. It was so hard. Obviously these hydraulics are stronger than a shovel, but it's not as hard as it seemed to be when we were working it by hand. Another benefit of doing it this way is that I can mix the soil. Like if there's a, a spot where the clay is deep or something, I can move the soil around fairly easy. This is a 50 by 30 garden, so it's 1,500 square feet. It was all planted pines. We had the pines cleared out, and then we came in here and box bladed it to make the pasture smooth. Then we planted all this Bahia grass by hand. Deb and I walked across all of this five or six acres out here in the front. Then we drug that seed in and it grew pretty good. Oh, we also had it limed. We had some agricultural lime brought in and a big lime spreader truck. We fertilize it every year too. So this ground should be fertile. A pleasant day out here too. So it's kind of fun, not too hot yet. Won't be long here in North Florida. You get pretty sticky out here trying to do any kind of work. Look how well that's turning up. I'm just going down and scooping and then pushing it back a little and then swinging a little to kind of knock the big clods down. But it's working out really well. I don't know how long that bucket is, but I'm getting down well over a foot deep, if not 18 inches. But I'll leave a comment down below if you've ever seen a garden done like this before. I think it might be the first time. I know it's the first time for me and I grew up on a farm, so we've done a lot of gardening. Nothing real technical here. I'm just taking the teeth at first and then just ripping the grass so I don't get big clumps of grass. And this has changed since I started, kind of learned a little along the way. So then I rip that grass so I have bare dirt. So then I get the bucket sideways and now the teeth are all the way in there, but you see how tall the bucket is, probably a couple feet tall. I scoop that so you see how deep it is. And that's that deep tillage. And then I take it and dump that in the same hole to kind of mix it. And then I just go back and forth and do that same thing. I want to break it up as much as possible. I don't want to bring up too much clay from the bottom and bury this topsoil because this topsoil is kind of thin. It's only had a few years to develop. But I also want 
any roots to be able to go deep and get the nutrients. So that's why I'm kind of doing this deep tillage thing. I'm not an expert at either ex excavator operation or what I'm telling you here, but if you were using a moldboard plow, you'd only be going down maybe eight or 10 inches as deep as your tractor could pull it. And you'd be turning this uh, cover, whatever the cover is, the grass cover, you'd be putting it underneath the dirt and then exposing the soil that's eight or 10 inches deeper. That's a real good way of doing it, but we don't have a moldboard plow. This is what we got. We got this machine and we can go a lot deeper with it. By the end of this video, you're gonna see a perfectly tilled field or garden. But it's also gonna have that benefit of not having a hard pan. And that's just not something you can see from the surface. If you just constantly run a tiller over the top of something, you're just gonna have four to six inches of tilled dirt and uh, eventually it's just gonna develop that hard pan that the roots can't get to. So this is breaking up any hard pan that's there and also helping prevent any in the future as we bring some of that clay up to the surface. Another thing that this will allow me to do is kind of level this. This is just mowed pasture so it's got some Got some trenches and stuff in here, some bumps that we can smooth out by moving this dirt around that we wouldn't have been able to do if we just had, let's say, a stand behind rototiller. And we and we tried that out here. We had a rototiller and it just stayed on the surface. All right, this is the last bite here. When I pile it up too high next to the excavator, I just push it back a little. Go down, get a deep bite of that soil, and then drop it on the top and kind of mix it. I don't know how long I've been at it. I didn't film at all, but it doesn't feel like it's been a very long time. So after I got that all roughed up, I came down the center here and just swung the bucket all the way around in a circle and that was letting me get kind of like a leveling indicator where I needed to knock down some dirt or push some dirt. So I got it fairly level, as good as you can get with an excavator anyway. So let me knock out this last little piece here and then jump on the tractor. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up that stage of the process. But like I opened with in the beginning, I don't think you've ever seen a garden tilled before with an excavator. So now you have. I've dumped about 12 buckets or so with the Kubota. I'm going to go get maybe five or 10 more. Then I'm going to box plate this and run a rototiller over it. But we're going to save that for a different video. So until the next one, y'all take care. And remember, life short, tractor hard. PG out.